Hi, it's me Chris again. I said I'd be making different videos whenever I added things to my telescope and uh, I added something a couple of weeks ago and I finally got you got a chance to use it and, and uh, play with it for a while. I think it's pretty good for me but uh, it's a, a, an Orion AccuFocus electronic focuser that attaches to the uh, focusing one side of the focusing knob on the uh, uh, telescope and uh, anyway I'm going to go over it and show you how to install it do a little bit of talking and then show you what uh, it did for me all right thank you very much hi what we've got here today is the Orion AccuFocus electronic focuser from Orion and I'm going to put it on my telescope uh, because I'm an old guy and I have a hard time focusing because I shake too much so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open this up take a look at what we got uh, first things first set of instructions always read the instructions pretty straightforward I've already been through them once all right and uh, this is pretty much what's all in the box and how it attaches to the uh, how it's installed two different styles of focuser you've got the Crawford focuser installation instructions and you've got the rack and pinion focuser and I'm going to say mine's a rack and pinion uh, and I'm going to use the instructions for it all right so with that aside we'll go ahead and unbox this and this looks like the controller here comes with a velcro strip velcro velcro strip for uh, attaching it to I guess the tripod leg or wherever you feel like you need to attach it to. All right. And now it looks like it's the servo motor. Now, that's where it would plug in using a phone cord looks like a four pin phone cord between the unit and we got here phone cord probably get rid of that one and use one that's not uh, uh, spring loaded like that coiled up what the word I'm looking for one that's not coiled straight longer one and you've got two brackets two styles of brackets and this one's for the Crawford focuser and this one's for the rack and pinion focuser all right and a little bunch of little parts here. And I would imagine this is our collar to go between the focuser, the uh, servo motor, and the focusing knob attachment on my telescope. Looks like one end's a little bigger than the other end as far as hole wise. Two different size Allen wrenches in the set. And we've got let's pour this out right here and see what else we got here. We've got two washers, two tighters, and four screws. And that looks like that makes up the bulk of all the pieces. Nothing left in the box. Now that we've seen all that, we'll get down to uh, installing it on the telescope. 
Okay, for install purposes, I actually got some leftover packing from when I got the telescope with a little curve in it so I can cradle it so it won't roll around. And then you need a, a Phillips head screwdriver, which is the little cross screwdriver. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put the, the telescope in here so like I say it won't roll around and I've got a towel underneath it so in case I drop any little pieces they'll hopefully stay here and not bounce off the table and into the carpet and I can't find them. Alright, now that I've got the telescope set up, uh, what I want to point out is the uh, mounting bracket to go on the tripod is right here. So what I want to do is since it's centered and I don't want the extra weight of the uh, uh, servo motor because it's not light. It's not that heavy either. But I, want, I don't want the weight way out here so it'll actually bring the telescope weight down. So I'm going to put it back towards the center of the telescope. I don't know if that's a good idea but to me it seems like the best idea. So what I've got to do is I've got to unscrew the knob on that side now on this telescope it just screws in others may have a key key lock to lock it in place but this one just is uh, screwed on and there was some Loctite on the on the screws so it was kind of hard to get off so I had to get a pair of pliers and uh, so I could hold this and turn it off and r rotate it off so what I'm going to do is what, now that I've got that off there I'm just going to take the two screws on this side out because this is the side I'm going to attach it to and by just taking two off the, the spring that's in here holding everything together should stay in place because if you take all four of them off you have to make sure that you keep it tight in here because there's a spring back there and I noticed that I pulled them off there's a little give on this side now so I'm gonna take the bracket for the rack and pinion and then using the screws that they provided I'm gonna screw it back in on this back end Started them by hand, so I'll start, and I won't, I won't uh, cross threads, cross thread them, and ruin the threads on them in case I ever have to take it off for some reason or another. And use the old screws back in it. I'm gonna tighten them down, but I'm gonna lightly bring them down so I have some play in here so I can still adjust the bracket in and out. Alright, so this side takes the bigger hole here. See? Gotta loosen gotta loosen up the there's two little lock nuts on here. Use the Allen wrench. I don't know if you can see in there. They kind of stick through and they stop it, so I need to back them out a little bit so it'll fit inside there. See that slit a little, not quite enough. You don't want to pull them out too far, they'll drop out. There's not much holding them in place when you're unscrewing them like this. And that's typical of any of this type of, see. I don't know if you can see that, but now it slips on. Alright. Now the thing is, this servo motor, it won't fit in the other side. So what you have to do is you have to take the top off the servo motor, untighten the screw, the lock and screw, and kind of twist and pull. screw this screw and you, 
once you get it loose you have to twist and pull like that get it off now the small side of that will fit on this now there is a well, it said there was a flat in the instructions but there's no flat yeah there is a flat there's a flat right there so you need to take that flat and this one uh, lock on this side Back it up a little bit. So you want to make sure that that flat and that nut are on top of each other. So it slides on. And you want to keep the nut on the flat so it locks down tight and proper. And if you're pretty close to the flat, it'll pull itself to the flat. Now this has actually got a little spring in it, spring action, so it, it wobble, it can wobble a little bit. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is I will insert this into here. One more on this, this one, I think. Slide it on. And while that's in place, I'll take one of the thumb screw locks. Put a washer on it. This side, I will thread it into the holder. Start it in there. Go to the second one. got the locks in there so you want to make sure that there's enough on the uh, shaft of the focuser to get the lock nuts tight so now I'll finish screwing these down now I'm going to rotate it around this way so you can see down here a little better here you can see the lock nut here and there's two of them. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to rotate it around to where I can get to both of them. So I'll grab the remote and the coil. And plug this in here. This end to this side. unit takes a 9 volt battery right back here so we'll plug the battery in we can have power and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that around to where one of the lock, lock nuts is here and one is inside here. So see how I can adjust it to go around? So as you can see, I've got one lock screw there and one lock screw there. So now I can get my Allen wrenches 
tighten those down. All right, now, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two thumb screws down with a regular flathead screwdriver so it won't come out as easy. And I can get a little tighter with a screwdriver than I can with my fingers. Now, the controller itself has got and a, a speed adjust on it for fast all the way down to slow. So you can adjust the, how fast or slow that you're going. So if you're further away from having it in focus, you can do it fast and focus. It's, and then once you get close to what you're going, you can slow it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and see. So I'll turn it back up all the way. See how fast it's moving. And I'll slow it down all the way. See how it's not moving hardly at all. About midway. And that'll keep, that should keep me from jiggling the telescope while I'm trying to fine tune the focus. Because you focus it for a while, you have to get, let your hands off of it, let the telescope settle, and then if it's still off, you move it a little bit more, let the telescope settle, so you can see how well you've done. And that's how it mounts. And uh, we'll take it out and, and see the difference in how my focusing is on something like the moon. All right, thank you.